In this video, I want to talk about how we actually test for processes which are stationary, but stationary around a linear time trend. So the idea is that in our particular test, we are going to test between a model which is something like this, yt is equal to alpha plus yt minus one plus et. And remember that this is a random walk with drift, so this very much is a non-stationary time series. And we're trying to work out whether we've got that or whether we've got a model which looks like this, yt is equal to alpha times time plus some error et. And we already spoke about this second type of process. This is actually a process which we refer to as being trend stationary or time trend stationary. And the reason for that is because if we take alpha t over to the left hand side, we just get left with et. Then because of the fact that we've defined this error term here, to itself be iid with a mean of zero and a variance of sigma squared, then once we've removed this mean term here, this mean linear trend, our variable actually becomes stationary. So how do we go about testing for whether we have this sort of model where we have a random walk with drift or we have a deterministic time trend? So the way to go about this actually, as it turns out, is to do a regression of the change in yt on alpha plus delta times our ordinary yt minus one term. But then what we do is we actually include a time trend here plus our sort of error term. And why do we do this? Because of the fact that this kind of implies that yt is going to actually itself be quadratic in t opposed to being linear. So you might think that an appropriate test here, the null hypothesis would be that delta equals zero in that we have a non-stationary time series and gamma equals zero. So there might be some sort of f test, we, well, f type test we could do on these two variables. Well, it turns out we don't actually need to worry about this gamma term, independent of whether the fact we actually have a process y yt, which is quadratic in t or sort of higher order in terms of its t. Even if it's linear in t, all we need to do is include this gamma t term here in terms of the auxiliary regression. So the null hypothesis here, again, is that delta equals zero against the alternative, which is delta is less than zero. So what we do here is just like we did before, we calculate the ordinary t-statistic on the estimated value of delta, which is delta hat. And then we compare that t statistic with the values from a Dickey Fuller distribution. But it turns out that the Dickey Fuller distribution in the case where we include a time trend here is slightly different to the Dickey Fuller distribution where we didn't include the time trend. And the reason for that is that because of we're including this time trend, it would make it more likely that we would reject the null hypothesis of a unit root process having uh, actually being time trend stationary when in fact it was still a, a unit root process. So it turns out that the critical values here are actually even more negative than a standard Dickey Fuller test under no time trend. So the critical values are that much more negative, making it that much less likely that we will conclude that we don't have a unit root. So remembering that both the t and the critical values of both of these two Dickey, dis Dickey Fuller distributions are going to be negative. So the idea is, is when we have a time trend, we compare it with this sort of augmented or slightly different Dickey Fuller distribution rather. And if it's less than those particular critical values, then we conclude that we have a process which is non-stationary, even if we take into account a time trend. So how do we decide whether to include a time trend in our regression or in our Dickey Fuller test? Well, one of the simplest ways is just to plot the variable. And it looks like, if it looks like the variable is increasing across time, then we should probably be including a time trend. Whereas a, if the variable itself doesn't sort of increase over time, perhaps it does something like this, perhaps we don't want to include a time trend in our Dickey Fuller test. But there's no hard and fast rule as to when we should include a time trend and when we shouldn't. 